Good morning, and welcome to the Church of St. Jude. Please rise and join me in singing, O God Beyond All Praising. the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. On this fourth Sunday of Lent, God draws us to his Son, Jesus, the light of the world. Today, the church throughout the world celebrates the second scrutiny with those who are preparing for baptism at Easter. A scrutiny is meant to uncover and heal all that is sinful in the hearts of those to be baptized, and bring out and strengthen all that is good. The scrutiny is also for us. We, like the man born blind, are in need of healing. We must not be like the Pharisees in today's gospel, failing to recognize truth and goodness. Let us open our hearts to our God who calls us out of darkness into his marvelous light. And now, in order to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins, and let us ask God's mercy and forgiveness. I confess to Almighty, Almighty God, God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who through your word reconciled the human race to yourself, in a wonderful way. Grant, we pray, that with prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten toward the solemn celebrations to come. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, 
who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the first book of Samuel. The Lord said to Samuel, Fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem, for I have chosen my king from among his sons. As Jesse and his sons came to the sacrifice, Samuel looked at Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is here before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not judge from his appearance or from his lofty stature because I have rejected him. Not as man sees does God see, because man sees the appearance, but the Lord looks into the heart. In the same way, Jesse presented seven sons before Samuel, but Samuel said to Jesse, the Lord has not chosen any one of these. Then Samuel asked Jesse, are these all the sons you have? Jesse replied, there is still the youngest who is tending the sheep. Samuel said to Jesse, Send for him. We will not begin the sacrificial banquet until he arrives here. Jesse sent and had the young man brought to them. He was ruddy, a youth handsome to behold, and making a splendid appearance. The Lord said, There, anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel, with the horn of oil in his hand, anointed David in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord rushed upon David. The Word of the Lord. Love 
Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. A reading from the letter of Paul, letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light, for light produces every kind of goodness and righteousness and truth. Try to learn what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the fruitless works of darkness. Rather, expose them, for it is shameful even to mention the things done by them in secret. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible, for everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore, it says, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. The word of the Lord. Sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus passed by, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither he nor his parents sinned. It is to so that the works of God might be made visible through him. We have to do the works of the one who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no, work can, when no one can work. While I am the world, I am the light of the world. When he said this, he spat on the ground and made clay with the saliva and smeared the clay on his eyes and said to the man, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means sent. So he went and washed and came back able to see. His neighbors and those who had seen him earlier as a beggar said, Is this the one who used to sit and beg? Some said it is. Others said, No, he just looks like him. He said, I am. So they said to him, How were your eyes opened? And he replied, the man called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes and told me, Go to Siloam and wash. So I went there and washed and was able to see. And they said to him, Where is he? He said, I don't know. They brought the one who was once blind to the Pharisees. Now Jesus had made clay and opened his eyes on a Sabbath. So then the Pharisees also asked him how he was able to see. He said to them, he put clay on my eyes, and I washed, and now I can see. So some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God because he does not keep the Sabbath. But others said, how can a sinful man do such signs? And there was a division among them. So they said to the blind man again, what do you have to say about him since he opened your eyes? He said, He's a prophet. Now the Jews did not believe that he had been blind and gained his sight until they summoned the parents of the one who had gained his sight. They asked them, Is this your son 
who you say was born blind, how does he see now? His parents answered and said, We know that this is our son, and that he was born blind. We do not know how he sees now, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him. He is of age. He can speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews. For the Jews had already agreed that if anyone acknowledged him as the Christ, he would be expelled from the synagogue. For this reason, his parents said, He is of age. Question him. So a second time they called the man who had been blind and said to him, Give God the praise. We know that this man is a sinner. And he replied, If he is a sinner, I do not know. One thing I do know is that I was blind, and now I see. So they said to him, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I told you already, and you did not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you want to become his disciples too? They ridiculed him and said, You are that man's disciple. We are disciples of Moses. We know that God spoke to Moses, but we do not know where this one is from. The man answered and said to them, This is what is so amazing, that you do not know where he is from, yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but if one is devout and does his will, he listens to them. It is unheard of that anyone ever opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he would not be able to do anything. They answered him, You were born totally in sin, and are you trying to teach us? Then they threw him out. When Jesus heard they had thrown him out, he found him and said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered and said, Who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. He said, I do believe, Lord, and he worshipped him. Then Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment, so that those who do not see might see, and those who do see might become blind. Some of the Pharisees who were with him heard this and said to him, Surely we are not also blind, are we? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would have no sin. But now you are saying, We see, so your sin remains. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today we celebrate Laetare Sunday. Laetare from the Latin for rejoice. I'm wearing rose-colored vestments. We're more than halfway through Lent. And so we rejoice. All of us have blind spots in life. Physically, it may be the place behind us while driving a car where we can't see. Metaphorically, it may be that we are so intent on details that we don't see the big picture, like the old idea that we can't see the forest for the trees. Our gospel today talks about various forms of blindness, physical as well as metaphorical. Jesus heals a man born blind. While Jesus was the one who actually healed the man born blind, John shifts our attention away from Jesus by limiting his appearance to the very beginning 
and the very end of the story. John chooses instead to focus on the other characters and their response to Jesus. This strategy propels us to look at this simple miracle story more deeply and reflect on who Jesus really is. Jesus healed the blind man's vision by sending him to the pool of Siloam. At the same time, Jesus also set the man on a spiritual journey, one that progressed every time he was asked to testify about what had happened to him. Although the healing of his physical blindness was instantaneous, his growth in spiritual sight was gradual. Initially, the blind man simply said he was healed by the man called Jesus. Later, he displayed increased insight as he called Jesus a prophet. And still later, one sent from God. Finally, and most profoundly, he proclaimed his full faith in Jesus when he confessed, Lord, I believe, and worshipped him. Taking us step by step on the man's journey to faith, John allows us to see and taste the great gift that Jesus had given him, not just his eyesight, but eternal salvation. Turning his back on his lack of parental support and the hostility of the religious leadership, the man came to recognize Jesus, whom he had never actually seen face to face, as the Lord whom he worshipped. Ironically, the Pharisees grew only more confused and less comprehending, easing even as the blind beggar became more clear and strong in his convictions. The Pharisees saw the same miracle, but to their spiritual loss. The Pharisees met Jesus without really meeting him. They failed to accept the truth they had physically witnessed precisely because they did not have faith. Their spiritual blindness deepened because of their smugness, self-centeredness, and general hardness of heart. They heard Jesus and they saw him, but they neither saw nor heard the, sal the salvation that was at hand. They were expert in preaching the word of God to others, but they were blind to the word of their own scriptures, such as that if you would hear God's voice, harden not your hearts. The correct heart is the dwelling place where God lives. The heart is our hidden center, beyond the grasp of our reason and of others. It's the place of decision, deeper than our psychic drives. It's the place of truth, where we choose life or death. It's the place of encounter with God and others, because as image of God, we live in relationships. For those whose hearts are not properly formed, like the Pharisees, the heart can be a barren waste, but the person who is seek but for the person who is seeking God, it can be, as for the man born blind, the way to heaven, the way to the kingdom of God. If one is so busy doing and experiencing that there's no time for reflection, life becomes not a connected whole but a series of disjointed parts, like a mound of beads without a string. 
The forms of blindness in the gospel are varied. The blindness of the faithful disciples who couch their theology of illness in terms of blame. The blindness of neighbors and family who won't be involved in the new vision, either out of discomfort or fear. The blindness of a religious establishment which couldn't see anything good happening outside its own system. We too suffer from various forms of blindness. For that reason, we need the penances and sacrifices of Lent. Lent is a time of preparation for and reflection on baptism and the sacrifices entailed in its promised allegiances. Though for many of us, penances and sacrifices may at times appear to be unnecessary and unacceptable suffering, they can make us trusting of God, open, humble, strong, and beneficially pliable in God's hands, as the blind man was. Self-denial can purify us into becoming a ray of that blessed light that broke the darkness of Calvary and heralded the glorious resurrection. It can beautify us before God who is looking into our hearts and seeing goodness that people can't see. And it can change the sinful part of our lives from the blindness and darkness of appearances into seeing the way God sees. Good morning. Today we invite you, the Catholic community of St. Jude, to participate in the second scrutiny with our elect who are preparing for baptism at the Easter Vigil Mass. As Father stated, the scrutinies are a time of reflection, a time of purification and enlightenment, a time of conversion. But they are not just for the elect. We too are called to a deeper commitment to conversion through each day's tasks, trials, and temptations. We too are called to examine ourselves before the Lord and to pray for the elect and each other on our path to holiness. The theme of the first scrutiny using the story of the Samaritan woman at the well was Jesus is the living water our source of divine life. The theme for this second scrutiny is Jesus is the light of the world. We, with the elect, should reflect on when have we been spiritually blind to the light of Christ in our lives? When have we failed to be the light of Christ for others? Then, how should we prepare ourselves to be guided only by his light in this present darkness? As I call your name, will the elect please come forward with their godparents and sponsors? Catherine Mandel. Michael Scampini. Elect of God, please kneel down and pray in silence that the Holy Spirit may inspire you to true repentance and fruitfulness in the sight of God 
so that you may be a bearer of God's love and care. Let us pray for our elect, whom God has called, that they may remain faithful to God and boldly give witness to the words of eternal life. We pray that God may dispel darkness and be the light that shines in the hearts of our elect. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. That God may gently lead them to Christ, the light of the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our that our elect may open their hearts to God and acknowledge him as the source of light and the witness of truth. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God may heal them and pre preserve them from the unbelief of this world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That saved by God, who takes away the sin of the world, they may be freed from the contagion and forces of sin. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That enlightened by the Holy Spirit, they may never fail to profess the good news of salvation and share it with others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That each one of us, by our example of our lives, may become in Christ the light of the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That every, every inhabitant of the earth may acknowledge the true God the creator of all things, who bestows upon us the gift of spirit and life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the protection of the Ukrainian people and the end to hostilities in their country, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the sick of body, mind, and spirit, that they may know the healing touch of our loving God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In your prayers, please remember Brian Trusty and Michael and Elizabeth Ross, for whom this Mass is being offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pause now to pray for the intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts, as well as those needs and petitions written in our Mass book. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all the faithful departed, that they may now the joy of eternal life with God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O oh God, amid the dark chaos from which you brought forth the world, you spoke the liberating word, let there be light. Speak this word into our hearts as we prepare to celebrate the rising of Jesus Christ, the Son of Justice, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Will the church please be seated and the elect remain standing. Lord God, source of unfailing light, by the death and resurrection of Christ, you have cast out the darkness of hatred and lies and poured forth the light of truth and love upon the human family. Hear our prayers for Catherine and Michael, whom you have called to be your adopted children. Enable them to pass from darkness to light and deliver from the prince of darkness to live always as children of the light. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
Lord Jesus. At your own baptism, the heavens were opened and you received the Holy Spirit to empower you to proclaim the good news to the poor and restore sight to the blind. Pour out the same Holy Spirit on these elect who long for your sacrament. Guide them along the paths of right faith, safe from error, doubt, and unbelief, so that with eyes unsealed they may come to see you face to face, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Will the elect please return to your seats. So often our world is plunged into the darkness of sin and evil. Today we hear that Jesus Christ brought light to the darkness of the blind man's world. He can do the same for all of us. He can lead us from darkness to light. And our blessing for the candidates. Well, they are already one with us in baptism. Our candidates for full communion have been journeying together with our elect and the RCIA team for the past seven months. Will the candidates please stand? And will the congregation please extend your hands towards the candidates for blessing? Heavenly Father, we ask your continued blessing upon these candidates as they continue their journey of faith. As they complete their preparation, may they continue to experience Jesus as the light of their lives. And may their hearts be renewed and filled with joyous anticipation over the wonderful things that God has in store for them. Catherine and Michael, please stand. Elect and candidates, your whole church, your whole parish longs to have you gather with us at the banquet of the Eucharist. Until then, be assured of our loving support and prayers. We ask you now to go and reflect on today's scripture readings. Until we meet again at the next scrutiny, may he who is the light of the world be with each of you. Please stand. It is traditional during Lent and the Easter season that in place of the Nicene Creed, we recite the Apostles' Creed. And so today, let us recite the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life, life everlasting. everlasting. Amen. Amen. Please be seated.
straight and tall, so must we to others call. Long have I waited for your coming home to me and living deeply our new life. The wilderness will lead you to your heart where I will speak integrity and justice with tenderness you shall know long have I waited for your coming home to me and living deeply Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all God's holy church. We place before you with joy these offerings, which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as is fitting for the salvation of all the world. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through whom Christ our Lord, by the mystery of the Incarnation, he has led the human race that walked in darkness into the radiance of the faith, and has brought those born in slavery to ancient sin, through the waters of regeneration, to make them your adopted children. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth, sing a new song of adoration, and we with all the host of angels cry out, and without a hand a claim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by standing down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Until Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, 
We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Ronald, our Bishop, all the clergy and all your faithful people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with St. Jude and the Blessed Apostles, <coughs> with St. Augustine and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of our God's peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. 
Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Yeah. 
And now let us offer our act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Our announcements. Bishop Hicks has announced that beginning on Palm Sunday, the dispensation from the obligation to attend Sunday Mass will end. This Friday is the first Friday of the month and we'll have Eucharistic Adoration from 10.30 a.m. until 5 p.m. Let us pray. O oh God, who enlighten everyone who comes into this world, illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, <coughs> that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty and love you in all sincerity, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Look upon those who call to you, O Lord, and sustain the weak. Give life by your unfailing light to those who walk in the shadow of death, and bring those rescued from, by your mercy from every evil to reach the highest good. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, O Christ, our Savior.
Jesus Christ. 